The Red Queen Hypothesis The Red Queen Hypothesis was named after the Red Queen in Lewis Carroll's book, Through the Looking Glass. The Red Queen says, Now, here, you see, it takes all the running you can do to keep in the same place. The hypothesis focuses on the Red Queen's race for both her and Alice to continue to run but remain in the same place. So we're trying as hard as possible to evolve, and when we do, we're still in the same exact spot we started in because we're still competing. The Red Queen hypothesis states that the primary driver behind evolution is the struggle to survive rather than environmental forces. The phenomenon proposes that organisms with our environment must persistently adapt and evolve to survive. Evolving organisms are constantly competing against other organisms. The Red Queen hypothesis has been supported by several studies. One of the studies is by Deanna Soper, which, who supported the Red Queen hypothesis with her research of snails. She found that a challenge to the health of the snails caused the snails to respond by increasing their rate of mating and their number of mates. They test the Red Queen hypothesis to see if exposure to parasites would increase mating behavior and number of sexual partners. They found that parasites cause an increase in mating activity and promiscuity when exposed to parasites. Predictions that were made include the fact that sexual individuals should be favored where the risk of infection is high, host genotypes should oscillate over time, there should be selection against genotypes that were common in the recent past, and parasites should become adapted to infecting local populations of their host. In asexual lineages, offspring are clones that may be slightly different from their parents by random mutation, so they are already adapted to their environment. They don't need to find a mate, which would take extra energy and time. Though they run quickly, they do not run quickly enough to escape their fate of parasitic infection. So if one clone gets sick, they all get sick. Their fast reproduction process can also lead to overpopulation. According to the Red Queen hypothesis, sexual reproduction persists because it enables host species to evolve new genetic defenses against parasites that attempt to live off them. Some of the advantages of sexual population compared to asexual populations include the fact that sexual hosts don't have to wait for slow mutation rates in order to generate variety in their offspring. Also, because offspring of sexual parents contain some of the genes from each parent, which are often different from one another, sexual hosts can quickly produce a variety of characteristics in their offspring. The variety produced is so great that the parasite mutation, despite their rapid generation time, are not fast enough to successfully invade the host. Asexual producing organisms seem to have an advantage over sexually producing organisms, considering the goal is to spread one's genes all over the place because asexual organisms can produce much faster and don't have to invest time or energy into finding a mate. Unfortunately, this fast-producing process can lead to overpopulation, which also makes it vulnerable to parasites. If organisms are always competing for resources, then those species that can increase their population size most quickly will have an advantage. The Red Queen hypothesis states that the primary driver behind evolution is the struggle to survive rather than environmental forces which is also known as the cost of males. Because in order to have sex, you need a male and female. However, males cannot bear their own children, which limits population growth in species with males. David Green and Chris Mason wanted to compare the Red Queen effect, which is sexual reproduction, to the cost of males, which is asexual reproduction, in order to see which one is better. Using a computer program, they simulated host mutations. The black curve represents the adaptation score of sexual population, while the red curve is asexual population. 
both under the same steady state conditions. The adaptation score tells us how well adapted the host defenses are in a certain population. In the simulation, they created the host mutation rates were constant while the parasite mutation rate increased. As shown in the graph, adaptation score of the population declined as parasite mutation rate increased. As shown in the graph, as parasites are able to mutate faster than the population, the sexual population has the advantage. The green curve represents the adaptation score for the sexual population adjusted by a factor of 0.5 to reflect its lower fitness relative to the asexual population due to the twofold cost of males. The green curve lowers the adaptation score for sexual population, putting it as a, at a dif disadvantage. When the parasite isn't mutating as fast as the population, the asexual population has an advantage. The Red Queen hypothesis can be applied to business in the sense that if a business kept making the same product and never added new features or products, they would lose business because customers want new things and not the same exact thing. For example, in 2008, Google came out with the Android. If they never changed anything while Apple kept coming out with a newer, nicer, and more expensive iPhone each year, no one would buy an Android because people always want the newer items. If no one ever created new things, then we wouldn't be where we are today.